to uh, the final panel of the day on uh, market infrastructure developments in the five regions that make up the uh, uh, World Forum of CSDs. Uh, Nicholas Malia, extra policy advisor, will guide us from one region to the other and, and present the speakers. Uh, before I turn it over to Nicholas, I just want to remind you that following this panel, we will have uh, our final address of the day from Mamohan Singh, uh, which promises to be a very interesting address. So stay around for that. Uh, Nicholas, over to you. Hello, everyone. Hello, Bruce. Welcome to session four of our conference. In this session, we will listen to representatives from each WFC regional association. My name is Nicholas Malia, policy advisor at one of those associations, EXA. I have the pleasure, pleasure of introducing you to our presenters. They will share the developments for market infrastructures across the globe for their regions. Within the hour, we hope to shed more light on each region so that we can form a clearer picture. First, we have Jasmine Ma, Secretary at ACG, the Asia Pacific CSD Group. Hello, everyone. This is Jasmine Ma from ACG Secretariat. It's a great pleasure for me to meet all of you online. The topic of my presentation today is Asia-Pacific CSDs, Advancing in Collaboration and Innovation. My presentation will be divided into two parts. In the first part, I will talk about the ACG's work recap. In the second part, I will share with you the emerging trends in Asia-Pacific CSDs. In the past two years, COVID-19 pandemic indeed posed daunting challenges for all of us without exception. Yet it has never been able to press the halt button for ACG Secretariat. Under the leadership of Dr. Dai Wenhua, the ACG Chairman, ACG Secretariat has carried, a, carried out a series of innovative initiatives. In fact, ACD community has never been more dynamic and engaging than it is today. The first initiative we have is ACG webinar. ACG Secretariat successfully held two webinars and invited seasoned experts from the industry to discuss the topics like the COVID-19 opportunities and challenges in the post-trade industry and the use of fintech in post-trade industry. These webinars are welcomed by all the ECG members. The second initiative is ECG Member Profile. ECG Member Profile was compiled by ECG Secretariat. It introduced the 35 member organizations and two associate members of ECG, as well as the markets where they operate. ACG member profile serves as a clear and brief business card for the ACG community as a whole. And this profile can be downloaded from ACG official website. The third. Hello, everyone. This is Jasmine Ma from ACG Secretariat. It's a great pleasure for me to meet all of you online. The topic of my presentation today is Asia-Pacific CSDs, Advancing in Collaboration and Innovation. My presentation will be divided into two parts. In the first part, I will talk about the ACG's work recap. In the second part, I will share with you the emerging trends in Asia-Pacific CSDs. In the past two years, COVID-19 pandemic indeed posed daunting challenges for all of us without exception. Yet it has never been able to press the halt button for ACG Secretariat. Under the leadership of Dr. Dai Wenhua, the ACG Chairman, ACG Secretariat has carried, a, carried out a series of innovative initiatives. In fact, ACG community has never been more dynamic and engaging than it is today. The first initiative we have is ACG webinar. ACG Secretariat successfully held two webinars and invited seasoned experts from the industry to discuss the topics like 
the COVID-19 opportunities and challenges in the post-trade industry, and the use of fintech in post-trade industry. These webinars are welcomed by all the ECG members. The second initiative is ECG Member Profile. ACG Member Profile was compiled by ACG Secretariat. It introduced the 35 member organizations and two associate members of ACG, as well as the markets where they operate. ACG Member Profile serves as a clear and brief business card for the ACG community as a whole. And this profile can be downloaded from ACG official website. The third initiative is research bulletin. We know that finance industry is undergoing tremendous changes every day. The central bank digital currency, the cybersecurity, and the process automation, such kind of new words and phrases popping up every day. So ACG Secretariat feel it obliged to keep up with the trend and make our members relevant with the trend. That's the reason why we set up Research Bulletin. And we have released three editions of Research Bulletin covering topics as shown on the screen. The fourth initiative is ACG Newsletter. ACG Newsletter is one of the most important publications for ACG, and we have issued 10 editions. In each edition, the newsletter will cover the contents such as the market updates in the region, the recent events of ACG, the task force contributions, and gas column. In gas column, we will invite experts from Euroclear, Clearstream, SWIFT, Deutsche Bank to share their insights and viewpoints on this industry. The fifth initiative is Networking Week. Networking Week was the online event held by TDCC in 2021. And together with six task force conveners, uh, the event uh, was very successful. And the members uh, from ACG community share their latest development, their market innovations with each other. And this event attracted over 300 participants online. The sixth initiative is mutual support. ACG's community is very united. And this is the congratulatory speech by Dr. Dai Wenhua for KSD's launch of RFR calculation and publication service. So we support each other's innovation. What we have in the pipeline is the ACG online cross-training seminar to be held from September 26th to September 28th, 2022. And the theme is reshape CSD in a new normal. So this is the first part of my presentation. In the second part, I will talk about the emerging trends in ACG community. The world is transitioning to digital economy, especially in the post-COVID era. CSDs of ACG are also catching up with the trend. As the wide range of measures, such as lockdowns, quarantines, social distancing, etc., were carried out, the necessity of bringing investors' services online have been further highlighted. So the digitalization of investor services has been accelerated. Um, as such, the members in ACG community either modify their existing portals or create new platforms for their investor services. For example, CDS Sri Lanka provided the vo virtual or hybrid AGM platform for their investors. And Bursa Malaysia created Bursa Anywhere. This is a 
uh, mobile depository services app for their investors. KSD, South Korean CSD, developed the K-Vote system for e-voting services. So this is the first trend. The second trend is new solutions to new market demands. ACG members are exploring new solutions for emerging market demands. In Korea, KSD has developed the and launched the VentureNet platform to provide automated services for the VC industry. So CSD's business scope is expanding from exchange market to OTC market. VentureNet is warmly welcomed by the venture capitalists in South Korea. Apart from expanding the business scope, CSD in this region are also upgrading and I innovating itself. For example, uh, CSDC in China has been preparing for the registration-based IPO reform and DVP settlement reform. DVP settlement reform is very meaningful. Uh, it will further improve the safety and efficiency of China's settlement system, especially in Asia market. And this DVP reform will be further elaborated by Dr. Dai on session 11. The third trend is market-to-market -market connectivity. We know we, I will also take China as an example. China's bond market is relatively segmented and divided into interbank bond market and exchange traded bond market. And these two markets are lack of connectivity. So the FMIs in these two markets are trying to improve in their connectivity with each other. So it will provide uh, more convenience for the investors. Actually, it's kind of one-click access for the investors uh, without having to open accounts on both sides of the markets. And the second connectivity um, project is the uh, Stock Connect. Um, now we will include m eligible ETFs into the Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong, Shanghai Stock Connect. So these are the uh, three trends I introduced to all of you. Uh, the first one is the uh, digitalization of investor services. The second one is the new solutions to new market dem demands. And the third one is market to market connectivity. So this wrap up the presentation today. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Jasmine. Next up is Bruce Butterell, Executive Director of the America CSD Association. Welcome, Bruce. Uh, thank you, Nicola, in the Americas region. Uh, I'd like to begin with uh, a brief overview of what uh, AXT is about. AXT is a regional association of depositories uh, in the Americas that was founded in 1999 and incorporated in Lima, Peru. We are uh, one of five regional CSD associations, but the only CSD association that operates in two official languages. In our case, that's Spanish and English. Our membership, uh, we have 30 member market infrastructures, including the largest CSD in the world and some of the smallest CSDs. And our membership also includes five central bank CSDs, which uh, adds a uh, uh, nice dynamic to, uh, to our diversity. AXA's role really is to work collaboratively with our members to help facilitate cooperation and interaction uh, among them uh, for their mutual benefit. Our focus, particularly recently, has been in the areas of broad critical interest to our members, cybersecurity, new technology, tokenization, operational efficiency, business diversification, and a myriad of other subjects. We've been conducting webinars on key themes on a regular basis uh, that we provide free of charge, not only to our members, but anyone who is interested to attend. Uh, you can find past webinars that we've conducted on our website, and the, the website is shown here on, on this page. And if you'd like uh, to uh, be added to our distribution list for future uh, sessions, uh, please send us a note to the contact information that is 
is at the end of my presentation. Also, uh, very importantly, uh, AXTA works in concert with the other four regional CSD associations as part of the WFC, as well as uh, industry partners. Just uh, a brief update on uh, some of the activities uh, and key developments in the region. This is certainly a, a very short list, uh, uh, given the time that we have available, but some things that I felt were uh, uh, very noteworthy. Uh, like so many other regions right now in, in the Americas, there's a tremendous focus on core processing. Uh, in the U.S. and Canada, uh, they have announced their intention to move to T plus one settlement in the first half of 2024. This is an important development for other uh, market infrastructures in the region, uh, especially those with uh, links to Canada and the U.S., uh, who are busy assessing their impact the implications of this change to their operations. In that connection, AXTA has established a working group in conjunction with FIAB, which is the Association of uh, uh, Latin American Stock Exchanges, to uh, dive deeply into this subject to, uh, to understand uh, not only what the implications of the move in Canada and the US to T plus one would be, but also what the implications to uh, their own domestic markets moving to a shortened settlement, shorter settlement cycle. Uh, a number of markets, uh, notably uh, Mexico, who uh, have a great deal of business in, uh, in U.S.-based securities, are assessing the move uh, to T plus one for the domestic markets as well. Numerous markets as well have uh, projects underway to replace their core depository systems. Uh, notably Argentina, Canada, who are uh, scheduled to go live with their, their new system in the second quarter of 2023. DCV in Chile uh, will be uh, implementing their new core system uh, in June of 2022. And Mexico and Panama have projects underway to uh, assess what options they are going to pursue with respect to uh, uh, their core system redevelopment. Many of our uh, members are exploring uh, potential in the area of fintech. It's certainly a priority for every CSD in the region uh, as a basis for re-engineering current business processes and as a catalyst for business diversification. DTC in the United States, for example, is applying DLT using their ION platform, which includes aspects of tokenization and and lateral relationships to facilitate cross-border clearing and settlement is important in the region. And Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Nicaragua are leading the way, uh, both in terms of the cooperation between the exchanges in those regions and the linkages that they have established for the uh, uh, depositories and clearing houses. CDS in Canada uh, is also launching a new collateral management service for Canadian securities, and they're doing that in uh, partnership with Euroclear. Very interesting development uh, is one involving Colombia, Chile, and Peru. The stock exchanges in those regions and their affiliated companies have announced their intention to merge uh, those markets going forward. It will be the first multi-market cross-border initiative of this magnitude in the Americas region. Their plan is to uh, create a common market for the three countries with an enhanced offering of business solutions and optimization of the market infrastructure processes. So this will be a very interesting project going forward. The legal integration is expected to be formalized uh, with uh, legal incorporation in Chile uh, in the second half of 2022 with the beginning of the actual market integration scheduled to begin in late 2023. That is just a, a very brief snapshot of what's going on in the Americas region. There's certainly uh, uh, much going on uh, with our members. So if you are interested, please visit our website at www.axta.org, where you can also access directly the websites of our members. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you to Bruce for your snapshot. And now we have Anna Kulik, Secretary General at EXDA, the European CSD Association. On to you, Anna. 
Thank you, thank you very much indeed. So it is my pleasure to be back on this stage now to, prepare, uh, to present you the regional updates uh, on, on behalf of the European CSDs. So we will be discussing what has happened recently indeed for the European CSDs among the major things and among, among the major trends uh, in Europe. My name is Anna Kulik and I'm the Secretary General of Exdom. So one of the major things uh, that has happened is Europe, uh, in Europe is certainly the regulatory development. So from that perspective, we will be uh, discovering further indeed the uh, major changes, how they have impacted uh, the CSDs and rendered them even more resilient and standardized in Europe. The journey of the harmonization does continue in, in Europe, but certainly further efforts are um, needed in order to create a fully fledged uh, European harmonized uh, post-trade environment for CSDs. The regulatory uh, background has created also a new push for the CSDs in order to uh, get with the strategic projects. Of course, they're not just regulatory driven, but many of them are uh, regulatory driven as well. And we will be also seeing um, uh, all the flow of the different interesting and very fundamental uh, strategic projects that have occurred in Europe recently. Uh, we'll also be able to discover how the European CSDs are reaching out to the international community and how they are establishing um, uh, cross-border links and certainly also how they have been able to develop cross-border groups as well. EXDA is a community on 39 uh, CSDs based in 35 markets. Certainly the major trends have been occurring in uh, the um, uh, continental part of Europe, which is part of the European Union, but many of the uh, third country to the European Union, European CSDs, uh, have been inspired by some of these trends. Uh, during this presentation, we will mostly focus on the EU CSDs, and certainly if you are interested, we will be very pleased as well to describe the uh, developments within the non-European uh, Union members as well. Uh, but so let's see how these trends are unfolding all together. Let's first look at the evolution of the European CSDs regulator landscape. And here we'll need to be um, defining the main three key blocks that are of uh, key relevance to the CSDs. First, which is related to the core CSD services. Uh, it is primarily, of course, the development and the implementation of the CSD regulation that has been of particular attention to us. By now, um, and during quite a number of years, European CSDs have been working very hard in terms of uh, adapting their uh, operational government, governance uh, and many other uh, settings to the uh, CSD regulation set up. Many of them are now licensed uh, indeed. Um, and uh, these uh, adaptations have also included, which is of the key relevance also to our uh, non-European members, the uh, CSD uh, links. So the due diligence on links, sorry for the change of slide. So here we can be particularly noticing that the due diligence on CSD links also uh, impacted the non-EU um, CSDs because indeed there was a requirement in the CSDR to make sure that the due diligence uh, takes particular attention to the uh, connections of the European CSDs to non-EU CSDs as well. But then, so another important regulatory block within the CSDR is about the uh, cross-border issuance, and that's also a major development that has allowed um, European issuers to be able to go into a CSD of another member state and have the freedom to issue in this other jurisdiction. So this new freedom is quite a fundamental right for the CSDs. It impacts all uh, the instruments, uh, so both uh, uh, debt like but also equity like uh, instruments as well um, and it allows the European issuers to issue uh, but also it requires the European CSDs to make sure that they are able to handle the law of this other country from which uh, the um, uh, participant is coming and in which it is issuing uh, the instrument. Uh, so then one 
And a final very important bit that I would like to highlight as being part of the CSDR is the settlement discipline. So the CSD regulation has also included a number of settlement efficiency tools and measures that have been aiming at uh, enhancing further settlement efficiency in, in Europe. So uh, the part which is related to settlement penalties in particular with regard to the penalization of the participants that have not been able to settle their securities that transactions on time and for the vast majority of instruments in Europe it is T plus two. Um, these ones uh, will be suffering uh, the penalties and this project has been already launched uh, on the 1st of February this year. It has been uh, quite an important development in Europe and we are now indeed uh, finalizing the last uh, bits and pieces and I hope that we'll be uh, seeing some effects uh, of this work in the second half um, of the year and we'll be running uh, this on a business as usual mode uh, in Europe. More training on the CSD regulation in particular is available on the EXA YouTube channel. But then, so now that we have seen this fundamental bit, which is really about the core CSD services, uh, the presentation would certainly not be complete if we would not cover as well the uh, part which is related to the ancillary CSD services. And here, the major uh, bits and pieces are related to the issuer and investor relationship, such as the major developments with regard to the shareholder rights uh, directive. And here, this bit has uh, primarily covered the, possi the possibility for the end investors to influence and to participate in the governance uh, of the European issues through a variety of tools. Uh, and one of the sections of this regulation included, of course, the flows of information from the issuer to the investor and backwards as well. So um, this regulation has particularly been impacting the post-trade from the perspective of the shareholder right uh, identification uh, and also the uh, regulation of flows, uh, the messaging related to the flows between the issuers and the investors, the timeliness um, and and a variety of different uh, standards related to it. Uh, with regard to the ancillary services, we also need to uh, mention that the uh, European community has been working quite heavily on the development of the corporate action standards recently in particular, uh, also tri-party standards, but certainly what's of relevance to our uh, global uh, CSD community is uh, the corporate action standards that are called SCORE standards, and that include a variety of um, different um, uh, requirements that will be uh, for compliance of the European CSD community and later for their CSD participant community, um, as well in terms of standardization of the corporate action processes. So everything related to the uh, payments as well, but also uh, the different processing of the uh, corporate events uh, as well that are to be noted. And I'm sure that uh, many of the European and global investors will be very interested uh, in uh, the possible compliance of the global CSD community with some of the standards as well. And this is done under the heading of ECMS and therefore has been mostly driven by uh, the AMISE co-community of the European uh, Central Bank, of which, of course, EXA and European CSD support. So more uh, information about some of these services are available on the EXDA website. So then one final bit is related to the digitalization uh, and here the trend has been mostly to regulate uh, the uh, matters related to the cyber resilience of CSDs and overall digitalization, so uh, digital operational resilience of CSDs, including uh, as well some of the tools uh, such as uh, use of cloud and AI as well. It has also been uh, about innovation and in Europe we have seen a very eminent um, bit that allows us to generate a number of very deep reflections on how to integrate the DLT technology uh, within the um, premises, so uh, within the um, uh, market infrastructures in Europe through the pilot regime. The pilot regime is limited for 
the um, uh, in terms of volumes and it is also limited to six years maximum uh, it will be entering into force and allowing the um, uh, technological community uh, so the CSD participants CSDs and MTFs to test the technology uh, already as from next year it also allows the possibility to have a hybrid entity so to combine a, a market infrastructure uh, uh, having both MTF uh, license, so a license of a trading venue, and the license of a CSD with some uh, specific exemptions. So now that we have seen indeed the uh, evolution of the regulatory um, uh, side, on the regulatory side, that's uh, certainly a major uh, in inspiring um, thing for everything that has been happening in Europe and also for the implementation of some of the infrastructure projects. But if we would need to be speaking about the infrastructure projects, we need to be starting from the ground, so from the really key element, which has been the T2S, uh, which has provided the common settlement engine for the Eurozone uh, CSDs and some of the uh, additional non-Eurozone CSDs are also now um, are starting to leverage uh, the use of the engine, such as indeed the uh, Danish CSD working within uh, the D DKK, so Danish Krona as well. So this project has created a common ground uh, for all CSDs, but it, it has also been uh, something which has um, uh, incentivized the CSDs to have further standardization and further harmonization across uh, European Union CSDs. Uh, some of the CSDs have also upgraded their legacy platforms and are now operating on the bright new, um, uh, very friendly user interfaces as well for their clients. Uh, indeed, the implementation of the regulatory bits and pieces such as SRD2 and uh, settlement uh, penalties, settlement efficiencies have also been major strategic projects that have occurred in Europe recently. And now we're more and more ready to work on the new uh, topics, on the new um, projects in the pipeline, which are ECMS and also innovation, of course. So here we're speaking mostly about the partnerships of CSDs uh, in DLT, but also the possibility for the CSDs themselves to develop new uh, entities uh, operating within DLT for their core and non-core services. Um, uh, the presentation would not be complete if we would not be speaking about the big number of CSD links. And here, the CSD community within Europe is very proud to have such a number of links. Of course, we do need to continue working further on uh, the uh, usability, on, on the demands by the um, CSD participants uh, to use these links. And therefore, of course, we do count a lot on the regulation to help us to uh, create further business case and incentive to the European investors to go cross-border and invest uh, in the um, securities of other, um, of other European markets as well. CSDs have also been working on the access between uh, themselves and other financial market infrastructures as well as the national central banks. Finally, we also need to be, uh, to be speaking about the cross-border consolidation and noticing that in Europe we currently see uh, quite a number of cross-border groups. Uh, this includes certainly Euroclea group that has been building um, and de developing further indeed um, the uh, cross-border uh, solution already for a while. Um, recently, we have also seen uh, the uh, emergence of the Euronext uh, securities uh, combining different markets such as the Portuguese market, the Italian markets, the Norwegian and the Danish markets. Uh, and also for a while in Europe, we have been seeing the development of Deutsche Börse within the three CSDs, the German, the Luxembourgish um, uh, uh, markets as well, where in Luxembourg they of course have an international and also a domestic CSD. Within the NASDAQ CSDs, they are now functioning within four markets, uh, although still having different SSSs, different security settlement uh, systems per member state, per country. Um, and uh, very recently, we have also seen uh, the uh, development of a joint SIX and BME, so the Spanish market as well, together with the Swiss market uh, group. So that's 
concludes uh, a bit the presentation of the major trends in Europe, but certainly EGSDA is the entity which is supporting, of course, all of these developments. Um, and I'm particularly pleased to uh, say that we have five working groups within EGSDA, mostly focused on public policy, settlement, compliance, further harmonization, in particular currently in the area of corporate actions and risk management, which is for sure one of the key major elements and the heart uh, of any financial market infrastructure and certainly CSDs. Um, and we also have the development of the specific task forces um, dedicated to the most urgent and most eminent uh, priority topics right now. So should you be willing to know more about Texda, we will be certainly very pleased to engage bilaterally, but also do check uh, what we're doing on the Texda website uh, as well. Thank you. And with that, I conclude my presentation about the major uh, trends and updates within the European CSD community and pass on uh, the possibility to have the, the stage back uh, to my colleagues to present their other uh, regional associations uh, evolution as well. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for those insights. We will now be joined by Abdullah Jafar Abdin, Chairman at AMEDA, the Africa and Middle East Depositaries Association. Welcome, Abdullah. Thank you, Nikola. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me such a great pleasure being among great leaders in capital markets in general, and particularly in CSDs and, and uh, clearing houses. Uh, we hope that this is the last virtual conference we have in WC. I'm looking forward to see you all physically in the upcoming uh, meeting. Uh, AMIDA was established uh, in 2005. If I may go to the next slide, please. AMIDA was established in uh, 2000. 2005 started with, uh, yeah, okay, you can go to the next slide. So, I mean, the game was established in 2005, it started with uh, seven members, and now we are proudly uh, announcing 33 uh, cleaning houses and CSDs and eight custodians. Uh, uh, some of the regions, uh, the, the CSD services are still provided or rendered within a uh, stock exchange, but we hope we hope that those uh, capital markets or stock exchanges spin off the CSDs as soon as possible. My name is Abdullah Abdin, as indicated. Uh, recently, we have been restructuring uh, AMIDA due to so many factors. So, uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed Abdul Salam was there, and then uh, he had to step down, was resign, uh, resigned from AMIDA, and then uh, uh, I talk over uh, Amida today. I have also my assistant, Mr. Waziri. Going to the next slide, I always wanted to mention that uh, we have seen a very uh, clearing houses and CSDs uh, are, are and were proactive in the capital markets. Uh, historically, uh, CSDs used to only concentrate on the secondary market. Today, we can see clearing houses and CSDs is heavily uh, involved in the primary market, secondary market, and of course, uh, post-trade services and enhanced post-trade services mentioned uh, by our colleagues from different regional uh, CSDs. Uh, I would also like to mention some success stories looking at this uh, marvelous uh, flags and, and map. Uh, we've seen our colleagues in Egypt providing non-core businesses uh, when we had few, uh, when we had meetings in, in uh, Egypt, we could stay in a hotel that was owned by uh, MSTDR because they invested in this hotel and they they uh, sort of diversified their, their revenue from different sectors. They also invested in a soccer team that we could see this soccer team either was in the first or second class in the in the Egypt. Uh, our colleagues in uh, NSDL in India, uh, I'm sure most of you know that 
they they were always thinking out of the box and providing tremendous non-core business services uh, to all of these stakeholders across the world and and and, uh, and the region. Uh, going to the next slide for me. So these are the uh, list of the uh, Amina members. Next, please, next slide. Uh, the current project that uh, Amina members are uh, working on, and we have seen from the activities as well as the projects uh, that targeting all the capital market stakeholders, starting from the investors, listed companies, brokers, uh, uh, and on top of that, uh, the, gov the, the regulators in different jurisdictions. We have seen also different kind of jurisdictions, unique one if we take our region, where we have the central bank wearing different hat, hat working as a single regulatory model to uh, uh, regulate and oversee different sectors in addition to capital market banking and also the, the uh, insurance sector. Uh, we know that the, this pandemic actually fastened lots of uh, initiatives that was and and that that were also in pipeline. Uh, on top of that is the digitalization. We have seen projects like uh, digital onboarding projects, and that of course comes when it uh, when it comes to market entry. Uh, we've seen uh, on the post services that e-voting services being rendered by so many uh, capital markets. Uh, if not uh, all of them. Of, uh, this kind of technology, this kind of you know trend, required some of the clearing houses and CSDs among AMINDA members uh, to really look at uh, doing in, lots of enhancements in their uh, own technology by upgrading, by also replacing the, the current uh, systems. Uh, we know that the uh, securities borrowing and lending in some of the regions are not that much active, however, in order to have a two-way market, some of the members also activated the securities borrowing and lending, and this, of course, led to an, a very uh, liquidity uh, being imposed in the region. Uh, when it comes to the uh, settlement guarantee fund, we know that is a very uh, uh, marvelous kind of risk management among the settlement failure. And we've seen that some of uh, our members looking at different uh, uh, DVP model, i.e. we know that the DVP, DVP one model does not exist anymore, but when you have DVP model two, where you have the gross and securities and, and net at cash, and some of the jurisdictions, they deal directly with the investors. And we are talking about millions of investors. And you know uh, what it takes in order for a CSD to provide or cover the services for million of investors when you directly as a CSD or a clearinghouse deal with uh, shareholders or investors. Uh, unlike the DVP3 where you have the net of securities and net also at the cash. So the challenge is really uh, very high when you deal directly with shareholders, uh, be it from you know, the market entry uh, to just onboard those to clients to clear and settle through the participants and the most challenging part is just to, uh, when it comes to the settlement default, and you know, some of the uh, jurisdictions required participants to inject uh, cash guarantee funds in order to have an immediate uh, uh, default settlement process. Uh, if we look at uh, the post rate services, and especially in the, in, during the pandemic, uh, some of the, uh, or most of the, the uh, CSDs and clearing, clearing houses enhanced uh, their existence of providing the e-voting. Uh, and, and we know just to jump for the e-voting, there were, there were like lots of challenges. Uh, one of the challenges was the legal. Some of the jurisdictions, they had to change their legal framework in order to process the e-voting. Uh, on top of that, the proxy voting that used to be handled, we know in, in some of the jurisdictions within the AMIDA members the foreign ownership limit is open up to 100% and 50% and were like having a residence and more than 50% were not residents in those jurisdictions, which required a lot of enhancements and regula regulatory kind of uh, updates to be done 
uh, on top of that, the technology itself. Uh, uh, last but not least, and, and this kind of you know uh, services rendered rendered and, and, and post trade services as the asset servicing. So, uh, and some of some of jurisdictions when the asset servicing, i.e., the cash dividend and the stock dividend, is being handed by participants, it's really easy for the clearing houses. You simply allocate each uh, uh, segment of the cash dividend or the stock dividend to each participant, the participant will hand over to the underlying clients. However, we have seen the huge challenge for the CSDs and the clearing houses when they deal directly with the shareholders. And we are talking, as I've indicated, with millions of shareholders just to make sure that their I-bands are updated, registered, reconciled, and their database, the database are clean, and the cash dividends are distributed on timely manner. And uh, you know, when, when uh, a, a, a dividend is declared by any listed company, the payment date is also predefined, and the payment has to be made on the payment date. So, uh, the reports we have been receiving from the members, they have successfully in the past two years handed all of those major change in the projects. And uh, we thank also the pandemic, although this is a very sad thing to witness, but it fastened lots of uh, initiatives that we in capital market gain. Uh, we, we've seen also the CCP, we know that the CCP, something is not common in, in some of the regions. We've seen in, uh, in the region, our colleagues in Tadawa, Saudi Arabia, they have been actively uh, working with the CCP and they went also live with the CCP. We've seen some interest from uh, some AMIDA members in order to act as sub-CCP in the region. We know that to have a full setup uh, uh, for CCP has a cost and impact on that. And if the demand is not up to the ex expectation, it's really always good to have this kind of integration among uh, uh, the members and the participants. So CCP was one of the major uh, initiatives that have been happening uh, uh, in the region. Uh, going to the next slide, uh, STP. The STP uh, is also, uh, I, I would say that it's a kind of consequence of the technology made. Uh, uh, we, we don't see any kind of uh, uh, physical uh, ownership of certificates. We don't see any kind of fig physical or, or let's say manual intervention during the processes among the capital market uh, service provider. Uh, uh, we have seen also uh, uh, some of the jurisdictions and capital markets that they have multiple settlement cycle, uh, i.e. Uh, they have like a settlement cycle for uh, equities which is, for example, T plus two, and then you have T plus zero for fixed income, and then you have T plus five for uh, DVP processes and, and trade rejection. So having multiple of settlement cycles is also a challenge that you have seen among uh, AMR shareholders, uh, stay, uh, participants. Uh, we have also seen some uh, value added services uh, provided by uh, uh, our uh, members within uh, AMIDA. Uh, we have seen collaboration among uh, the capital market service providers, the clearing houses, and we have seen connectivity among stock exchanges having cross-border settlement. Uh, we, we are also witnessing some projects in the pipeline that's gonna happen hopefully in the third quarter of this year, uh, linking two different markets having two different settlement cycle, having two different timings and marrying this kind of capital markets, it has lots of challenges, but uh, the timeline and the processes and the place, uh, we can see there is a kind of uh, successful implementation being in the place. And of course, uh, not only in the region and, 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 and Amida also have uh, regional and international kind of members that we are dealing with. Uh, going to the uh, next slide, if please. We did we did mention about the uh, digital onboarding, and it became a kind of uh, uh, essential for the clearing houses, whether 
it's being rendered directly by uh, the CSDs or their participants. Uh, having said that, uh, our uh, clients, or let's say our strategic partner, number one, are the listed companies. They would definitely need to interact on a timely basis, whether directly with the stock exchanges or the clearing houses. There are lots of tremendous disclosure requirements, rules and regulations being issued by the regulators. And we know that the main objective of all of these regulatory requirements is just to have the client asset protection. And we know how difficult it is when you have different geographical uh, listed companies involved, they would definitely need to have uh, technology in order for them to disseminate any kind of the disclosure requirement by the regulator, by the marketplace. So we've seen uh, clearing houses that they were proactive in this kind of service that provided to uh, all of the uh, listed companies. And uh, we did mention about you know, the system enhancement, and this is one of the most challenging, and I would say one of the most challenging in terms of you know, uh, capital and also the capital expenditure and in terms of cost. Uh, and that is last for me, going back to you, Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Abdullah. And now let's welcome our final presenter during this session, Arman Melkumian, Secretary at AECSD, the Association of Eurasian CSDs. Welcome, Arman. The floor is yours. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, so, hello, everyone. So, dear participants of the WEC Conference 2022, greetings from the AECSD. First, uh, let me briefly tell you about our association. Next slide, please. The Association of Eurasian Central Securities Depositories, ACSD, unites 16 central securities depositories in 15 countries of the Eurasia region. The association's mission is to provide a platform for sharing ideas for development and enhancement of depository operations, creating a common depository space and integrating the CSDs, the ACSD's members, into the global security settlement system. These three years were indeed full of challenges and opportunities, so I would, I would be glad to present a short overview of the latest development in the ACSD region and within our association. I will touch upon three main topics. ACSD members and COVID-19 pa pandemic, main trends among ACSD participants, and associations' news and events. So let's start with the pandemic. Next slide, please. The pandemic of COVID-19, beyond any doubts, was among the greatest challenges we have ever faced within these three years. According to the research performed by the ACSD shortly after the pandemic outbreak in 2020, Remote work uh, became almost a universal solution in the region meant to preserve human resources and ensure business continuity. The measures taken by the ACS depo ACSD depositories allowed for an uninterrupted provision of services for their clients and preservation of integrity of national financial systems. COVID-19 significantly increased the need for stable and reliable IT systems and the absolute majority of our members put a special attention to cyber resilience, both due to the new remote working format and increased number of cyber attacks witnessed by the international financial sector. In this regard, ACSD participants thoroughly studied uh, international experience and uh, developed um, their own in-house solutions for cybersecurity and resilience. Next slide, please. As for the uh, activities of the ACSD participants for these three years, I should particularly highlight the expansion of their international agenda both in terms of establishing new links among uh, CSDs within and outside the region, and in terms of increased participation in professional international organizations. 
A number of our members joined SWIFT and ANNA and took part in various global industry initiatives, including linking ICINs and LEIs. More ACSD members have started adoption of international standards and in ISO messaging, thus uh, forming prerequisites for more close integration in the global financial market. Along with uh, implementing common international standards, our members pay attention to uh, diversification of their business activities and revenue streams. Significant uh, number of CSDs in the ACSD region invest in research and development in the digital asset space, including development of DLTs and uh, evaluate uh, how they could adopt blockchain technologies for their services. The latest pandemic has also proven that e-voting services could be of a great interest of CSD's clients. And those are participants who had such system ready have witnessed outstanding increase in the amount of users. E-voting development is also accompanied by introduction of user applications and other remote services allowing for individual and legal entities to establish direct access to their securities account. Remote services received such a huge boost in development and attention that they were chosen as a topic for a seminar held by the special task force established by the ACSD members in 2021. And other spheres of interest of our members are fund management, crowdfunding solutions, along with pension funds and social programs. ACSD continues its research to better understand its uh, participants and create um, an overview of their business. In 2021, we decided to evaluate uh, the uh, practice of implementation of ESG standards among the ACSD members. So these results suggest that more than a half of the ACSD participants have long-term ESG calls and about a third develop services based on the ESG principles. Next slide, please. So all these topics and even more have been regularly included in the agenda of uh, the ACSD events, ACSD annual training seminar and the ACSD annual conference. In 2020, we decided uh, not to hold the conference, a popular event traditionally attracting many experts, regulators and industry representatives, but uh, the ACSD seminar was held uh, online for the first time in the association history. And uh, I should admit that it was a great success with the number of participants almost tripled compared to the usual numbers. This positive experience allowed us uh, in 2021 to hold successfully the online AECC conference and seminar with increased attention from the participants from inside and outside the association. ACSD is uh, constantly improving uh, to increase its uh, effectiveness and bring a feasible result uh, for its members. One of the steps um, in uh, this direction was uh, the, uh, the reform of the association's working groups that were cut down to only two. So the first one is a uh, permanent international uh, cooperation working group um, that is uh, dealing with uh, the AC ACSD participation in uh, the international activities and initiatives and includes representatives volunteered from the majority of the members. The second working group is assembled on a request of the members to work out any uh, particular topic. The results of its activities may differ based on the request of the members, including a special seminar, a white paper, analytical report, etc. So this composition uh, has already proven its efficiency, both in terms of knowledge uh, sharing and um, as a tool to increase participation of all the members in association ongoing decision-making process. 
Um, this year, annual general meeting, among other topics, uh, is expected to determine the participants who will become the host of the WC conference in 2025. So the ACSD remains uh, a significant platform for its members to receive expertise and exchange knowledge among themselves. And we're happy to support global initiatives such as WC e-learning platform administrated by the ACSD and located on the ACSD website. And we are also determined to be faithful to the motto of our association, evolution through diversity, success through amity and cooperation. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Arman, and thank you all for sharing this clear picture of such global developments. These detailed updates can only but help in shaping our vision and a better understanding the environment of the CSD industry. This concludes our session. I hope you all continue to enjoy the conference, and I'll now pass the baton on to Bruce.